Hello, this is another in my little series of the best way of cooking fish. Well, it's not fish today actually, it's mussels. Moule marinières, the dish, very, very simple. And we start with just chopping up a few vegetables which are gonna go in with when I'm cooking the mussels. So, first of all, an onion. And I would say, when would you eat moule marinière? I'd say Saturday lunch. It's sort of one of those dishes that is very celebratory because everybody's picking things with their fingers, maybe drinking a, a glass of white wine as there's white wine going in the sauce. And also what's really good about moor marinier, it's not very fattening. The mussels are only little things and you end up with a bit of butter, quite a lot of butter. And I'm gonna put some cream in this one too. But you can be on a diet, eat a moor marinier, take your time to eat it and feel very good about it afterwards. Not too much white wine, of course. So first of all, I'm gonna cut the onion. Chop from the leaf end because the root end holds the onion together when you chop it. So you go through there like that, and then you do a couple of side slices like that just to make them break up nicely. And then you just go like that. Now what I tend to do, because I've always got stock going, Unless I'm not bothered about having a few big bits at the end of the onion, I'll stop there and that will go into my stock pot. I'm going to just do the other side. Try not to cut into your fingers, it doesn't half hurt. Good, so there my onion's ready to go. And now I am going to put some garlic in there. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. More marinier, it just means mariner's um, mussel stew, I suppose. And now uh, you can put what you like in it, but today I'm putting um, garlic, onions, and I'm going to use white wine, but if you're a Breton or Norman mariner, maybe you'd use cider rather than white wine. But there's my garlic, all those go together. And I'm going to finish off the dish with a handful of parsley. And this time, sometimes I cut the parsley very tightly, very, very small, but this time I want the leaves just to sort of appear very obviously with the final mussels. There we go. That's enough for me. Right, and now the mussels. First thing for is just pull your mussels out of the net. That's how they come, generally in little blue nets like that. But some of them are open, okay? See that one's a little bit open. And the way you tell whether they're still okay to cook is Obviously give them a, a smell of the sea. But just go a bit with your fingers like that. All you want to see is some sign that they're still alive, basically, so that the shell is slightly closing. I would say that if you're buying mussels, do use them that day, but these are fine. Good. And the first thing I'm going to do is just add quite a lot of butter, I'm afraid. In goes that, just wait that to melt down a little bit. Okay, there we go, the butter's ready to go. Great thing about moor marinier, it's really quick to cook. So in there goes my onions and garlic all mixed up. You don't need to add them separately. Search for a wooden spoon. As is the case with these, this fish cooking, unless you're cooking Asian fish, you really don't want your onions or your garlic to catch. You don't want it to caramelize. You just want to sweat and you're left afterwards with just a lovely smell of hot butter and not of caramelised onion. When you're cooking Chinese or you're cooking Southeast Asian, that's what you want. You want that really caramelised, almost burnt smell of garlic, and garlic particularly. The next phase, which will be to add the mussels. Just pour them all in, like that. And the next thing that goes in is some white wine. <coughs> about 50, 60, 75 mils of white wine or cider you can use, doesn't matter. You just want, it's just very nice mussels with a bit of winey alcohol flavor, but cider or wine is what I tend to use. Stir them over, uh, around. One thing I've forgotten, which I should have added before, lots of pepper. Don't need to add salt. There's so much natural salt in a mussel because of the seawater that they live in. And now, most important, put the lid on, right? And the reason for that is you want to build up steam. So the mussels are part cooked in their own juice, but part cooked in steam. This is going to take, say, two or three minutes. So in about a minute's time, you will open the lid and see how they're doing and give them a great big stir. 
they're beginning to open. You can't see much sign of it, but, but I can. So just give them a stir like that. There's one that's cooked already. A bit hot. See, it's already cooked. Back on with the lid. The point is, when you do when you do finish cooking them, you must take them off the heat because if you leave them cooking any longer, the muscle just starts to shrink and become tough. It's really a question of judging when they're just cooked. Now then, sometimes I like to put cream in, sometimes I don't. This time I'm going to put some cream in, some double cream, just a little bit, just to add to the sauce, and parsley. There we go. And then find a spoon somewhere. Just have a little taste for the salinity, really. Oh, that's perfect. Really nice. A final stir. And that's it done. And what could be nicer than that? Recipe below. <laughs>